How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays with Jim Valley, Sundays with me. Still a little hoarse. My voice is not fully recovered. I had a bad cold or something. I lost my voice. I can't breathe. It's been br brutal. Brutal. But I'm here. We're doing the show. But man, I got a lot of, lot of news. I, I caused some problems yesterday, unintentionally. <laughs> I didn't know that this was going to blow up uh, the way that it did, but we're going to go into a little bit more today of a potential new AEW show on a Warner property. Could be TBS, could be TNT. We'll talk about it. And what is this show going to be? I got some news on that. We'll talk about that. WWE wants to allow gambling on its matches in North America. This is something the UK has been able to do for a while now. You can bet on anything there. Everything and anything. And apparently that's coming over here. Uh, it's going to be kind of classified as entertainment betting, like how you can bet on the Oscars. But I kind of want to go into this because it's not going to be this huge, gigantic thing that people think it is. It's going to be caps on this. It's not, you, you're not going to be able to put down like $10,000 on Roman Reigns winning and, and get this great, you know, prize at the end. More WrestleMania build, obviously. We're a few weeks away from that. The fallout of AEW Revolution. Great show. Not a lot of high expectations. It wasn't one of those shows. But, man, it blew all the expectations I had. I, I very much enjoyed the show. We have Raw to cover. We have SmackDown. We have everything else happening. And tonight, there's a show at the Garden for WWE on the road to WrestleMania. We have all this and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. I guess we'll start off with a big story here. Started some stuff on the internet yesterday. I didn't even post. We did the Matt Men podcast with my co-host Rich Stambolian yesterday live in the morning. And just talking, you know, we, we started discussing uh, this, this little rumbling I've been hearing. I... Um, had a nice little conversation with somebody over a couple drinks and dinner a couple of weeks ago. Actually, last week. And, um, you know, this came up in conversation. They're not really in the wrestling world. A lot of my sources, they're not in the wrestling world. I don't talk to people really in the wrestling world in that, in that level. You know, I'm not, I'm not contacting people in locker rooms. I mean, sometimes I confirm them because some of these guys are my friends and I know them and I talk to them. Uh, I have a lot of friends that I'm friends with. So, you know, you, you try to piece things together. And I listen, the reality, I do this for fun. This is not my main career. I have, you know, I have a consulting company. I do all this, but I, I love this stuff. And I, and I think giving little tidbits like this helps, you know, just it's the viewership. It gets you excited. It gets you talking. And I think it's a positive. And that, that's really why I do it. I, I kind of enjoy it. It's like therapy for me. But in talking, you know, just we were talking about TV and TV rights and how it's headed and where it's headed. And uh, and the conversation came up of watch hours and inexpensive programming for networks to produce. And it just went into this conversation about, you know, hey, by the way, I heard some rumblings. There may be another AEW show coming. And I'm, I'm for anonymity reasons for this person, I'm, I'm going to I'm not going to dive deep into everything that was said. Right. But. Here's, here's pretty much what was said. Inexpensive content matters, especially in, in television. And if you have a property that's hot, that's getting, uh, you know, you, you talk about AW ratings constantly. Everybody's obsessing over this 830,000, 890,000, 900,000. But that's a very high number. You know, uh, uh, wrestling fans, we're, we're stuck on this attitude era level of, number that represents a good viewership it, you're, we're never going back to that uh, you know listen if, if wwe could do five million viewers on a raw that is astronomical numbers that is on the level of major sport brands it's just something that doesn't happen anymore but we have seen the numbers go up incrementally I think for AEW, they are they are doing very good with their viewership. Could they do better? Absolutely. If they're sitting in the in the million range, that's very healthy for them, and that's a positive for them. 
And Warner knows this. Warner knows what they're capable of. Warner knows the value of the property. And, you know, Rampage was a request for more AEW programming. This reality show that they're going to be doing, or they are doing, after Dynamite, is a request. Obviously, you want more content. You want your viewership to stick around. If you could get 300, 400,000 people to stick around, 500,000 people to stick around from 10 to 11, that, that's an astronomical number to do. And Warner knows this, and AEW knows the importance of this, and they know the brand synergy is important for them, especially in a year that they're signing a new TV deal. So, it seems like there's an opportunity for them to do another wrestling show on a Turner property. I don't know if it's Ring of Honor. I don't know for sure if it's that collision trademark that they took out. Um, my producer can remember who reported. Was it? I forgot who it was, actually. I forgot who reported, but uh, I'll give you guys credit in the next segment for it. But there is an opportunity. And Tony Khan mentioned this a few weeks ago, that there there is request, there is a demand for more AW programming and more wrestling to put the wrestlers in front of a live audience or, or a TV audience. They have such a deep roster at this point, and this is part of the issue. They have such a deep roster that you don't get to see presented on national television. Yeah, you have Dark Elevation, you have Dark, or but who's really watching those shows? That's creating content so you have a library, you have content. The value of having a deep library is very, very important for your valuation as a company. Tony Khan buying Ring of Honor, yeah, I'm sure he wanted to do a live show. I'm sure he wants to do the pay-per-views. But the value of having a 20-year-old asset with 20 years of content of, you know, nearly every major professional wrestler to be successful. Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Samoa. I mean, the list goes on and on. That is value to your company. That is value to your brand. And if they have an opportunity to do a one-hour show, let's say on a Saturday. Let's, I'm throwing, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know. I didn't ask, but it was kind of like winking a nod. You know, maybe what's well, another day that's, that could work for them. Yeah, man, why wouldn't you take it? So I, 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 didn't, I didn't post this. Um, Wrestling Observer posted uh, on the front page. And I saw a lot of, and, I, and Sean Ross Sapp, a Fightful, and, and a couple other people posted it. But I saw, I saw some criticism. You know, do, does nobody needs a fourth hour of programming? Yeah, you do. You do need a fourth hour of programming, especially for the talent. Especially if you want these guys to be in front of a live audience. Also, why would, and, and here's the other side, right? Why wouldn't you just add a second hour of Rampage? Because that is a terrible decision to make. If you could avoid doing that, you want to avoid doing that. Do you as a viewer, you as a fan, want another hour of wrestling on a Friday night? You want four hours of wrestling back to back on a Friday night? I don't. I get fatigued. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm getting old. I know I'm getting old. I feel it every day. That's why I sound like this. My bones are broken. I don't think a, a second hour rampage is a positive, especially for ad sales. You have to put that into consideration, marketing of it, ad sales. However, I'm throw this is me being speculative. If you had a Saturday time slot at six o'clock, what kind of demo can you potentially grow that you can't do with a primetime show? Let's ask our producer Matt. Matt MG. Yes, sir. MG Geek. <laughs> yes, long sir. time, long time viewer of my content, and now he works for me, which was the worst mistake I ever made. What kind of audience can you attract with a six o'clock time slot on a weekend, maybe? I, I, again, I, I'm not, I'm being speculative with that time slot, right? Maybe a little, maybe not, you know? You figure it out. <laughs> I don't want to, well, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent certain that's the time. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to confirm it, but what can you reach that you can't at nine o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night? Sports viewers, people okay. like that, people that are watching uh, sports, live sports. Sure. Um, 
there's the romant there's a, the romantic uh, wrestling time, fan. That, sure, that, that the has, romanticized time slot. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, there's that. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot more people that uh, watch it, um, watch stuff like that um, for like the sports, like. TBS does baseball and, sure. uh, you know, that, so there's stuff on during the day and maybe in the afternoon or maybe it's a lead in, but you're forgetting one important event. thing, like one important mm -hmm. thing, myself, everybody, in my generation, mm -hmm. we didn't want, we didn't have Monday night raw when we started watching wrestling. And when we did yeah. have Monday night raw, it was late. We had prime time. Yeah. My dad would, my dad would, you know, wake me up so I could go watch wrestling with him. Kids. The one demo that WWE, that WWE has a major advantage it with. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be a kid-catered show, but you have way more of a reach, a way more of an opportunity to get in front of kids. A, I'm saying kids, but a younger demo. A much younger demo than you can at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. Right? No, 18, I'm going younger. 18, I'm, going younger, younger okay. I'm going younger, dude. I'm going younger. I'm going 9, 10, 11, 12. And you can cater the product a little bit better for that. You know, Moxie's not going to bleed all over the place. No, not going Moxie. I'm, 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 I, I just, I absolutely love him. I, I'm just using that as an example. But you have an opportunity. And what does that translate to? Merchandise, different ad possibilities. Weekend advertising is different. Uh, you know, you have your toys. You have your video game coming out. These are all things that you need to strategize. This is how, this, listen, this is my business. This is what I do. I think it's a brilliant move. Totally different time slot, totally different demo, totally different audience on a weekend. You don't have to do a million viewers, but you know what? 350,000, 400, 500,000 could be a very profitable thing for you. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back a little bit more on this and gambling. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Andrew Zarian here. Sorry, I, 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 I was coughing up during that break. I went a million miles an hour, and I'm feeling it now. Uh, so if I'm coughing here, uh, excuse me. WWE in talks with Colorado. By the way, let me, let me just back up to that. I, I, I think it's a positive. Again, I'm going to say this. WBD and AEW, uh, I anticipate them to have uh, a positive work experience moving forward. I don't, you know, there's a lot of speculation about that SmackDown uh deal coming up with Fox and the evaluation that Wells Fargo put on as it being a loss leader. Um, we, we'll go into that if we have some time this week or maybe next week, but they're in a contract year, and this is a very positive thing that they're being offered more more content on the brand. So you could look into that. That's obviously going to play a part in their next deal and how much money they get. Uh, and Tony's a smart guy, so very. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what this turns into. WWE in talks with Colorado and Michigan over legalizing betting. They also have filed in Indiana. Colorado has since said they have a stat statute that prohibits betting on predetermined events. If this were, this were approved, it means finishes would be kept a secret until the last minute. This is bonkers. This is silly and a little dumb. You, you can't keep it a secret. It, you really can't. And smart money comes in uh, with a lot of things, you, even non-predetermined stuff. You know, injuries happen. You, you see the smart money line come in for UFC, and it comes in even for betting uh, overseas in the UK for WWE. All of a sudden, you know, Brock Lesnar shoots up as, a, you know, somebody knows something. So how do you keep this a secret? The story was that uh, somebody on CNBC that I'm, I'm sure is not a professional wrestling fan and doesn't know the intricacy of the business, was saying that they would have accounting to deter, you know, to make sure that overseas that the stories don't get released and the finishes don't get released and the talent would be told three hours ahead of what the ending, the fit, you know, who's winning. That makes zero sense. These things are laid out weeks in advance. Major spots happen in matches due to who's winning and who's losing. You tell a story. Can you, I mean, it's like, maybe this is a bad analogy. It just came to the top of my head, but you're writing, you know, Scandal, the TV show. You're writing Scandal. Nobody knows the finish. Nobody knows. The actors don't know. They're just acting. 
it changes how you act. It changes, you know, how you your input level on what you're doing. They're not going to keep this a secret. And also, you think Roman Reigns isn't going to be told weeks ahead of time what his plan is, Cody? You think the marketing department and, and its brand partners don't know who's going to be the man in six months or, or, or the woman for the, for the women's division? These are things that are that's very difficult uh, to keep, keep track of. What's a probably going to happen, these are going to be very small bets, $10, $20, whatever the cap's going to be. And it's going to be more of a fun experience that you could do with, you know, like, like a DraftKings could do a, you know, a, a con more like more like a, a sweepstakes if you're betting on something. You know, there, there's 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 a reason why certain things are contests and sweepstakes. No purchase necessary. You know, I, I, I tend to feel it's going to fall in line with that more than anything else. You're not going to be able to go and drop 15 grand on Cody winning WrestleMania. I, and if you do, you, you do, you can. I think that's absolutely bonkers. I'm not a big gambler. Occasionally, I, I bring up, you know, my Caesars app. or Non-advertisers. None of these guys advertise with me. I'll take it out and I'll put money, like 50 bucks on something. My brother, he, he does tremendous with UFC. He does it all the time. And I was talking to him about it. He's like, I don't see this happening. Michigan and Colorado, though, they're, they, they're in talks to do it. I don't know how much money they could generate for the state. You know, a lot of this stuff is also state-driven. They are very, uh, you know, the profits coming in here in New York are, are unbelievable as far as tax revenue that's collected. The VIG, the VIG that they put on this. See, I, I, I know my gambling talk. The VIG. What's the over-under, MG? What's the VIG? That's how they talk, right? I'm like that, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put, I'm putting a 10, 10 point VIG on you. You know what? I am going to put a VIG on you. Every time you mess up something, I'm putting, I'm, I'm taxing you. <laughs> oh boy. Can My I friends over in Jersey, that's how they operate. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, so for example, even though you say that there, this wouldn't be a big, uh, big thing, I have a feeling, um, I have a feeling that a lot of people will bet on this. Uh, no, no, no. Maybe they will. They will. Yeah, I'm just I mean, saying it's not going to be a big thing. Like you can't drop no. 15 grand on a bet. You um, can't drop 10. Like let me, your let me winnings are not going to be. Your winnings are not going to be thousands of dollars. Maybe, maybe a couple bucks here and there. Right. Let me ask it this way: If this was already legal, um, and for elimination chamber, how many people would have bet on uh, Sami Zayn winning? A lot of people would. A lot of people. Up. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, because that was such a hot story and people get involved in it and they forget that, hey, the, they, the logic goes out the window. And I'll give you another example, because I do live in Michigan and I am actually looking at the odds for the Academy Awards. That You're are the starting. king of Michigan, dude. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You uh, walk around <laughs> with a crown and a scepter and you went and people think you're nuts. He, he's, he, he calls himself the king of Michigan. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so anyway, um. So yeah, so I'm looking at the odds right now, and there's one there's one movie that's um, everything everywhere all at once that's like minus twenty five hundred to win the best picture tonight, and I'm thinking, okay, there's no way I would bet anything else other than that, and I'm not going to make any money. So you're right, it's going to end up being a lot like that, the same thing. Yeah, well, um, but but remember, the Oscars, right? Mm -hmm. That's a little bit. I, I think that's more tight lipped than it, WWE. Yeah, it's easier to keep that, uh, Way keep that easier. a secret. You're yeah, because it's a committee of people. Exactly. It's a right. committee of a mm -hmm. couple people that know and, and there are NDAs and there are consequences for mm -hmm. saying stuff. You know, how many of us knew that Roman was winning? How many of us were told that Roman was winning? Yeah. At elimination and that's gonna chamber. Be what they're gonna have to eliminate if they if they're gonna be serious about doing it. They can't this. do it. They right. can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and how does it's that shift hard. if you know, and here's the other thing, right? Um, it's manipul man manipulatable. I can't. I'm sorry, man. I'm not feeling well. Uh, how, if, if I'm M Andrew Zarian Scoopster.com and I put out a fake report saying, you know, Sami Zayn is winning, which you see a lot of these fake reports happening constantly. You see a lot of fake documents released. How does that change the money line? Tremendously. You really don't have that with the Oscars. You don't have that in other uh, other uh, 
uh, not to this level. Maybe a little bit, but not to this level. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, it could be a fun thing. They could generate a lot of money. It, it, but if you got to look at it as like, okay, this is a novelty. It's not like betting on the NFL. You think bookies are going to take this bet? Well. Or if you think about it, you think about um, – uh, think think about um, like Royal Rumble. It's gonna be more of a party a party thing where you and your friends sure. get together and you go, exactly. "Hey, I got a couple bucks on, you know, number five winning the Rumble." Yeah, and, and doing it that way. That's gonna be more of a conversation piece. That's where I think they're trying to do make it more of an interactive experience. And that's cool. And that's great. That, that, but a lot of other people think that they're gonna get rich gonna on getting scoops, and you know, nah, uh, no. people think they're gonna mm -hmm. subscribe to Fightful, Fightful Select or the Wrestling Observer. And see a post about who's winning, and then go and bet a thousand dollar bet. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I think, and, and it's very well that if it, if, if uh, results do get out ahead of time, you'll see you you might see the bets get pulled before before. Yes. Well, they will. The yeah, are, for sure. Yeah, so for sure. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So. Very interesting. Uh, Ray Mysterio, the first inductee in the WWE Hall of Fame class of twenty twenty three. Looks like it's going to be a much smaller Hall of Fame. Uh, they're running it after SmackDown, and this is a side effect of having so much going on on that weekend and having Fridays for SmackDown. So they're running it right after SmackDown. Dave said that Conan is uh, inducting Ray, and what a great pick for for Ray. Really, the only pick. But man, you know, you know what's fascinating to me that he never went back there. K-Dog. Very interesting. Legendary act. Instrumental part in the Lucha, the Lucha Boom. WCW. He never went there. I mean, after, I mean, after Max Moon, he never went there. But he's going to be inducting him. Very cool. That's the first one. We've heard some other thing. Mick Foley came out and said that he's been asked to induct somebody. A lot of speculation around Molina being inducted in the Hall of Fame. You think that's the one, MG? Um, I think I think it's the great Muda. That's the one I'm that's the one I keep hearing. You you um, think you think Mick Foley's inducting the great Muda? No, I don't know about Mick Foley, but I think Great Muda's the name. Um He should. Uh, I mean would, if there was yeah, ever a year um, for him, that would be it. Mm -hmm. They're in LA. That's a nice easier flight than getting to New York mm -hmm. or someplace else from Japan. I think the mood. I think Muda should go in. Uh, Molina is the other name that I'm hearing. Couple. I, it's not going to be like ten people here. It's only a handful Whatever of people getting Batista. inducted. Batista. Batista was the other was, name. Yeah, yeah Batista yeah. was the other name that they were talking about. I, I. I think it's, you know, doing like eight people or whatever they they normally do. That's a lot of people. You're inducting every year, and you're running out of people. Yeah, I personally would like to see them rebrand it as a um, lifetime achievement award because it's not a it's not a Hall of Fame, you know. Like the observers, people vote on that. This is more a few people going, "Hey, we're gonna honor you this year." That's a lifetime. Yeah, but they like the award. name. Nobody understands what that. I know. Means, you I know. know. <laughs> yeah, but very interesting. Rey Mysterio going in. I have a lot more news here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into in the next segment. But I, would, I do want to talk about WrestleMania and how that's shaping up and the aftermath of Revolution because now they're in a very uh, interesting position here with what they're doing, with two pay-per-views coming up back-to-back. -back. Ah, I gave you a little, little hint here. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. This is, this is the hodgepodge segment according to my producers when I'm looking at my notes. I have... 10,000 things to go through <laughs> in this segment. Uh, some WrestleMania news. This card is shaping up fully. Matches added this week. Obviously, you have Rey Mysterio, like we discussed in the last segment, getting inducted in the Hall of Fame. I wonder what they're going to do with Dominic here. Like, is Dominic going to be forced to watch his dad and be miserable the whole time? Or is he going to get, like, arrested beforehand so he's not in the crowd? I, 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 you know, I think the visual of having all of Ray's family, Dom, 
and Rhea all sitting there in a row and Dom and Rhea look miserable uh, will add such a level of entertainment to that to that induction. I absolutely love it. Or maybe they take it very serious, you know? He's one of the greatest luchadors of all time, really. He changed North America's uh, pr perspective of, of what Mexican wrestling's like, what Lucha Libre's like. He was very much a transitionary guy in that in that era of you know him psychosis Hoovy, Conan obviously it really changed how, how I viewed wrestling so very important guy to get inducted well deserved matches added this week Becky Lynch Lita Trish Stratus face off against damage control I'm very curious what happens here because as far as I knew the title match the title match is uh, Shayna and Ronda against whoever's the champion. So I don't know if they're getting back to that or they scrapped it. Maybe they challenge afterwards and they win something. Who knows? John Cena, Austin Theory for the United States Championship. This was a burial of Austin Theory. John Cena came out. He, uh, he beat him up for a couple minutes verbally and he left on Raw. Seth Rollins, Logan Paul. This is the big attraction match for the crossover audience. I'm sure this is going to be very entertaining, and Seth is going to make this look like a million bucks, and Logan Paul's great, too. Regardless of what you think of the person, the personality, he's such a great heel. Matches previously announced that we knew. Undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, SmackDown Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair, Asuka, Inter Intercontinental Championship. I said almost International Championship. Wrong, wrong company. Intercontinental Championship. Gunther versus Sheamus or Drew McIntyre to be determined. Maybe it's a three-way. They could do that. And Brock Lesnar versus Omos, which is the main attraction, right? That's why all of us are going to watch WrestleMania. No, no. That's why I have a question for you. Yes, sir. A, do you think uh, this uh, Dominic uh, Ray? Do you think that's going to be some sort of big stipulation match? I know we've talked about it for years it, internally, us about maybe doing a hair versus mask match at some point with Ray, kind of toward the end of his career. You think we're think they would do that? Is that something? That I don't they, know. They would, I don't yeah. know. Because that would kind of be because that would kind of honor Lucha Libre, right? Because that was that's a big big part of it. You could do a I hair versus be, mask, yeah. I mean, he's Dominic's been growing out that mullet for something. <laughs> oh yeah, he just chops that Eddie mullet off. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I absolutely love and, that. You know, and it, and it goes into it goes into the storyline with the Eddie stuff too. He I starts think. screaming, "Mommy, mommy, mommy!" Yeah, and he's getting his hair chopped by his yeah. dad. By his that, dad. That would be a visual that would that would go over great at Mania. I think. I think that's a great visual. In in L A, which is a highly Hispanic market too, I think. Yeah, it, it'll get I over. Would, no, it's gonna be it's uh, gonna be over. Uh, I was just curious if that you thought that would be a be listen. Something I'm a big fan. I, I Dominic has come such a long way. I very much like this character he's doing, and and he feels comfortable now. You know, he's not he's growing into it, and this is part of the unfortunate thing. You know, you take someone that's very young and inexperienced, you put him on national TV, and they have to figure it out. And I think he's done a good job at figuring it out. People sometimes it takes time. Look at Austin Theory, young guy. I think putting uh putting Dominic with uh. Judgment Day with uh, Finn Balor, especially with tremendous. All the yeah, it's been great. Helped helped him a lot. So yeah, it's been great. Mm -hmm. Um, AW Dynamite. Let's go into. Oh, you know what? Uh, where was I going after this? Oh, let's go into AW Dynamite. There we go. Uh, this is for this Wednesday. AW World Trios Championship. The House of Black defends against the Jericho Appreciation Society, which will be Sammy Guevara, Chris Jericho, and Daniel Garcia versus the Elite Kenny, Matt, and Nick. This is the beginning. I would say this should be the beginning of the end of, of the trios stuff for Kenny and the Bucks. They could always go back to it. But Kenny needs to be a singles man. They need they need a they if if Danielson has taken some time off. I thought Mox would have taken some time off, but he he's not, obviously. Uh if Danielson's gonna go home for a little bit, you kinda need another top guy in that position. What if we know that they, we know that uh, Adam Cole's coming back? That's another one to add. Yeah. And here's the other thing: those two have to have a program, right? Because the way that Kenny left, they never, they never revisited that issue between them. What if um, this week 
they do the trios match at the beginning of the show in the opening match. It's a barn burner, but the elite lose. And then at the end of the show, he comes out because MJF, the next segment you're going to talk about, uh, MJF doing his rebar mitzvah. He says he's the best wrestler in the world and he's in Winnipeg. And then you get Kenny coming out and challenging him. And that we can start that program. That'd be great. Just a thought. Here's mm-hmm. my question. Here's what I really want to know. What's the theme of MJF's bar mitzvah? What's the theme? <laughs> you know how many bar mitzvahs I've been to in my life? Endless. Endless. I, I, I can't even. I went to one where the New York Yankees showed up. I, I swear to God. <laughs> I went to all these crazy theme bar mitzvahs. My best friend. His bar mitzvah theme. Sh- Do you know what it was? <laughs> Nobody would ever guess. It's the most bonkers, ludicrous idea. His bar mitzvah was a Dances with Wolves bar mitzvah party. I don't even know what that consists of. I wasn't there. Star Wars, great. Pro wrestling, great. Dances with Wolves? Who does that? That's insane. That's not a children's movie. So what is MJS Bar Mitzvah team? Is it the Islanders? I just saw a great clip of him. He was at the Islanders game with the title and he caked the dude that was talking to him. Fantastic. MJF's Rebar Mitzvah. Maybe Adam Cole comes out and does this. Maybe this is the next opponent for him. Here's the other part of this, and I'll and I'll and I'll touch on it. You have two pay-per-views back to back coming up for AEW, which is always a positive. You're gonna have double or nothing in May, and a month later you're getting Forbidden Door 2. I know that it was leaked, but I'll confirm that it is happening. I think I forgot a cable provider put down their pay-per-view list, and I was on it. It's definitely happening. It's not. It's not a question of not. It's a matter of okay, what are you doing? What are the matches? You know, Kenny's available. What do you do with Kenny for, for Forbidden Door? What do you do for the rest of these guys? Is MJF going to face uh, whoever the champion is at the time? That'd be great. Okada. <laughs> I mean, can you MJF versus Okada? Oh, could you man. imagine? What a what a bizarre clash that would be. Well, the other one, the other big name is going to be Mercedes Monet. You know, Mercedes Monet. The, yeah. Still the uh, women's champion. I see her and Jamie Hader. That would be. Do you know how I see that going? Mm-hmm. I see that going with her and Jamie have a great match. Here comes, you know, the WWE, uh, the 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 Outsiders 2.0. Here comes Sor- Soraya, uh, Soraya, and uh, and Tony Storm and Ruby, and everybody thinks Sasha's gonna side with them, but ah, uh-uh, ah, doesn't happen. She gets a big baby face ovation at the end. She's better on her own, I think. Yeah, I think so. In. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could do that. I mean, that's how I would do it. I, but what the hell do I know? I just talk about wrestling like a like a dummy on, on, on the radio. AEW International Championship, something that we were alluding for a while now. Orange Cassidy defends against one of one of my, the the great joys of pro wrestling for me at this moment, Jeff Jarrett. J E double F J A double R E double T. I why am I why am I looking forward to this? I have no idea. I don't even care. I've gotten over my 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 traumatic experience with Jeff Jarrett in in TNA. Mm-hmm. I think having him there has been so ent- I, maybe it's me, maybe it's just me. I'm so entertained by him. He doesn't belong, you know? Like and I it, it just it's just so odd. I think that's what it is. He, He's turning he into just... like Colonel Sanders with that hair. It's unbelievable. Such an old-timey dude. <laughs> Love it. Hangman Page, Stu Grayson, Evil Uno versus John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta on a three-on-three. TBS Championship, Jade Cargill defends in an open challenge. No idea who this could be. Who, so who's... What do you, who do you think? Oh, it's Natty. It's Canada. You got to bring out Natty, right? No? <laughs> who do you bring out? Who Who's like a, 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 well, a the, Canadian the star? Taya Valkyrie. Mm, um... Taya Valkyrie. You know, Lufisto is another name I think of. Angelina Love. Okay. That's three off the top of my head that I know are from Canada that would be available. Aren't tied down, or maybe that not. Aren't tied down to the WWE. Yeah. Mm-hmm. QTTV. So. QTV with QT Marshall and TNT champion Powerhouse Hobbs. 
and the outcasts will speak. Saraya, 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 Saraya. You so say that tomato, whole QT I say tomato. TV thing, that whole yeah. QTT thing was Q, just QT Marshall doing some sort of talk show. I guess so. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, uh, our friend Raj was not very, uh, very pleased with uh, QT. It's mm. okay. Listen, it happens. Sometimes this happens. Not holding against anybody. But very interesting card here. Um, you know, I, I, I think we're, we're, this is like the hottest period you're going to get. Between now and SummerSlam, a lot of stuff is happening. A ton of news is going to come out. WWE's on a, on a very, uh, I mean, they're in a boom. I, I, is, it, is it like the 2016 era when things kind of heated up, 2015, 2016? I, I don't know. I got to look back at that. Um, but, you know, it's a different time. It's more competition. You have another alternate product on television that gets a million viewers. You know, it, it's a little unprecedented, to be honest, because even when Impact was, you know, getting over a million, they had Kurt Angle and they had all these guys, it was never looked at as, okay, this is, this is, a, this is an old, a competitor. I think for AEW, they, they've, they've been able to be more of a competitor than Impact was or TNA was. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they travel for their show. And Impact didn't for a very long time. And when they did, it, they were losing money. I think a lot I of that comes they into have, play. They, they, having a Warner Brothers uh, Discovery as a media um, partner is really As a media partner, too. of course. There's a, lot, yeah, it's huge. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, they had Spike. That would that that's Viacom, right? Viacom is a huge property, and they had Hogan, and they had Flair, and they had Foley. It just it just didn't. They had the stink of WCW on them forever, and sometimes that's all it takes. I don't know why it, it just never left. Wrestling Observer Live going to a quick break and coming back with our final segment here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Final few minutes of the show. MG, my producer. What were your thoughts on that, uh, on the Iron Man match? I loved it. It was it was different. It was one of the... It, it didn't follow the, the um, I guess, schedule of a lot of these type of matches. They did different. It was some old school uh, psychology involved. And it just... It was really, really good, you know, having it be a tie. I had a feeling they might go to overtime just to say they did it. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, and I know a lot of people weren't happy with that. Um. But, you know, I, I – Why, why really weren't they? The it. overtime? Yeah, because they thought it thought it took away from – I heard no, a lot of people I, talking about it. I it thought it was great. from the match itself. You, you, know what, you know what it was for me? I, I – you know, the 60-minute the matches, it, it, it requires a lot of attention. To enjoy yes. it. And mm -hmm. it can be fatiguing. But they that I would say it was probably the best that I've seen. It, it's far, far better than the Sean and Storytelling and was amazing. Storytelling mm -hmm. was amazing from the beginning to end. Danielson did a great job. And MJF is proving, you know, more and more how he is the guy right now. And that's great. And to we see. know he likes pickles. He had pickles in the uh in the, in the, scrum. In the scrum. Yeah. He lost <laughs> his mind in the scrum. He started attacking Dave and Brian and started yelling at people and offering them pickles. I mean, he he's he had a horn coming out of his head. It he did. Great. Did you see that big bump? The Holy hematoma? moly. Yeah. <laughs> Holy moly. He said, I'm becoming the devil. But very interesting. Uh, I, I, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was great. I wanted to kind of touch on it because a lot of people asked me what I thought of it. Next week on Wrestling Observer Live, I'm going to have a guest. It's been a while. I'm going to bring in a guest next week. I'll keep it a surprise for you guys. But that's it for this week, guys. Do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarin. You can follow all the stuff that we're doing here. And we'll see you all next week on Wrestling Observer Live. See you later.